starts now. All right, starting off the six o'clock mm -hmm. hour, Madison just reminded us that uh, we're almost at Friday. We're almost at Friday, Friday of a holiday weekend. Uh, yeah, I got a little more pep now. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, plus, I think you're going to like the forecast for the weekend. Okay. Still going to be hot, going to be less humid. That's the weekend. Of course, today is just Thursday. I got a lot going on in the radar picture out there. As a matter of fact, been watching some of these showers, especially to the west since yesterday. So much rain falling in areas like Gulf and Bay and Liberty and Calhoun counties, getting huge amounts of rain, and there's going to be flooding problems there. I know we'd like to see some of this rain spread a little bit more to the east, and I think today it finally will. Futurecast wants to bring that boundary to and through our area, but probably not until later this afternoon and this evening, and that's going to be what brings maybe the better chance for some stronger thunderstorms. We already had one or two stronger storms already this morning, so there's lots going on with the weather. I'll be posting all kinds of stuff throughout the day, so please keep checking in with me. I don't think today we're going to watch those temperatures get near 90. Too many clouds, too many showers for that to happen, but I do see some small changes in that forecast, and I think we're going to like most of them. I'll break it all down, guys. Full forecast in just a couple of minutes. Right now, families are still coming to terms with the fact their children are gone after Tuesday's mass shooting. While that is happening, a town of 15,000 is coping and trying to find ways to help those impacted. Great TV's Megan Vanslow has more from Uvalde, Texas. Quiet Main Street. Businesses closing early, allowing staff to be with family. A small town with elegance refined in their response to tragedy. Some making signs of support. Others walking back toward the school where their classmates were killed to leave something beautiful behind. Passing flowers over barricades, all joining in prayer. Leaning on each other. It's just pain and sorrow. This priest from San Antonio came into town encouraging prayer at a tough time like this. He spent yesterday in the hospital with grieving families. One request, prayers. That's what they were asking, prayers. They knew that the situation was beyond, beyond control and their control. And so they say prayers, prayers, prayers. Earlier in the day, a line wrapping around the activity center to get blood donations to victims. Whenever, you know, you get calls for like, you know, a blood drive. It's like, well, I have blood. Traveling from across Texas to make a difference. 40 minutes is nothing whenever it comes to helping and doing what I feel like is, is needed. I don't live here, but this is my community. Coming up at 620, CBS's Danya Backus joins us live on the ground in Uvalde, Texas for more on the shooting and where the conversation goes next. A new phase in the retrial of Catherine McBanawal gets underway this morning. Prosecutors finished making their case yesterday. Today, the defense is up. Jacob Murphy has a recap. Wednesday was the longest day of the trial to date, but featured the fewest number of witnesses. Only one, the lead FBI agent in the case, Pat Sanford. The day kicking off with the jury getting their first look at a crucial part of this case, an enhanced version of the Dolce Vita undercover video recorded at a Miami restaurant in 2016 between Catherine McVanawa and Dan Markell's ex-brother-in-law, Charlie Adelson. Everyone in the courtroom using headphones, trying to get a better sense of what was being said. All of this unfolding from the bump or a fake blackmail. An undercover FBI agent presenting Charlie's mother, Donna, with Dan Markell's picture, a phone number, and a request for $5,000. A number of phone calls came from this. Wiretaps played for the jury, 35 or so in total. Charlie talking to his mother, Charlie talking to Magbanawa, Magbanawa talking to Sigfredo Garcia, the father of her kids and the convicted triggerman in this case. In one call, Magbanawa says there are, quote, too many details. He knows for sure, for sure. The afternoon featured a three-hour-long cross-examination of Agent Sanford by attorney Chris DeCoast ripping into the FBI's investigation of the case, a dissection of nearly every piece of evidence in this trial from Luis Rivera's critical testimony to the bank accounts that were analyzed. DeCoast at times trying to accuse him of perhaps slacking on investigating certain items in case they presented inconsistencies in the case. Sanford denied it all. 
The state finally resting their case around 5.30 Wednesday, bright and early Thursday. The defense gets their first chance to call witnesses. The judge hoping the entire defense witness list can be finished by the end of business Thursday. Reporting outside the courthouse, Jacob Murphy, WCTV Eyewitness News. And it's not clear yet whether McBanawa will testify in this trial. She did so in 2019 before the jury was unable to reach a unanimous verdict. In Hamilton County, an investigation is underway after an officer shoots and kills a suspect. It happened around 1 yesterday afternoon in Jasper. The sheriff's office says the deputy tried to stop a car for multiple warrants. The suspect, who was the passenger, allegedly ran from the car into the woods and started shooting at the deputy. The deputy returned fire. The suspect was taken to the hospital where he later died. The deputy wasn't hurt. Per policy, though, FDLE has taken over the investigation. It's 6.05 now. A portion of Tallahassee under a bottle boil water advisory. The city says it's precautionary measure for the neighborhood of South Appalachian Parkway between Forest Tower and Executive Center Drives after a water main break. All water used for consumption or cleaning should be boiled for at least one minute. The advisory will be cleared once tests confirm the water is clear of harmful bacteria. Now to a health alert in Lowndes County. Two mosquito pools have tested positive for triple E. The disease can cause a human's brain to swell and can be deadly. The Georgia Department of Public Health says taking simple precautions can help you avoid getting sick. They say wear long sleeves and pants when possible and use bug spray that has DEET in it. In some other news this morning, Leon County Schools LGBTQIA plus policy committee holding its second and final meeting Wednesday, trying to finalize a 20 page guide to help school staff support students while following Florida laws protecting parent parental rights. The committee will now give the guide to Superintendent Rocky Hanna to approve and then take it to the school board. It's impossible to write a document that makes everybody happy. I mean, we know that going in. But the community will have their opportunity to speak on it and say, we like this, we didn't like this, all that kind of stuff. And then the board can ratify it, and it'll be a guide in our school system. And Cox says they hope to have the guide approved by the school board in June and then have staff trained before the beginning of the next school year. A second Starbucks in Tallahassee has voted to unionize. The ballots for the location off West Tennessee Street were counted yesterday. A vote of four to three means it will form a united front when it comes to working conditions and other affairs. The move coming roughly three weeks after the store off North Monroe Street and John Knox Road became the first location in Florida to unionize. Time now for First Alert Weather with meteorologist Rob Nucatola. Been a pretty active morning so far on the radar. Maybe not for everybody, but we've been seeing quite a bit of showers off to the west. As a matter of fact, yesterday that rain so persistent in areas of Gulf and Bay and Liberty and Calhoun counties. Flooding is going to be a real concern there today for more of our area. We're just hoping to get some of that rain, and I do think some pretty good chances for us to get a solid soaking. Nice to see some of the rain falling in some of the eastern areas that have been maybe a little bit more exceptionally rain starved. So I see some showers just east of Perry, some light rain across much of Lafayette, a few showers in parts of easternmost Madison, westernmost parts of Sewanee and Hamilton counties, and I do see more activity in South Georgia now trying to get over towards Thomasville. Not quite there yet, but we've got showers in Cairo and points north all the way up to Albany. A few more showers back near Bainbridge and up Highway 27 towards Blakely. Now, here's what it looks like over the past few hours, and this is really just a whole bunch of energy out ahead of that main boundary that's working its way across parts of the south. That boundary is hooked on to a much bigger piece of energy stacked through the atmosphere over the middle of the United States, and it's going to take a whole day for that to keep moving east. When it does, it'll drag the boundary with it, and we start to notice some changes. This morning, it's muggy out there. It's still warm out there. We're at 71 in Tallahassee. We're at 70 in Thomasville. How about Live Oak or Cross City where it's 75 for us? And we're starting off at 68 degrees in Quincy and in Bainbridge. I don't see a lot of fog out there this morning, but there's a couple of spots where the visibility is reduced a little bit, and that's got to do with the rain. So we've got some reduced visibilities because of the rain. We're going to have some slippery roads, and you got to expect to get wet multiple times today. Now, Futurecast wants to bring that boundary to the area this afternoon, and there's going to be pockets where it's not 
not raining for a while this morning and even early this afternoon. But as that boundary gets dragged through the area, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock, depending on how far east or west you are, that's when we're going to have our best chances for some of those bigger showers and storms. Let's put today's rain chances about as high as we've seen them 60, 70, 80%. So I do expect many areas to get some much needed rain. Tomorrow we leave the rain chances up for at least a little while. And then as we head towards the weekend, we start to take those rain chances out. This time of year, when we're still talking highs near 90, an isolated sprinkle if the sea breeze fires up is always possible. But I think we're going to keep it drier, much more comfortable this weekend as we remove the humidity and start to pull in some of that drier air. Here's a look at that forecast for the next few days. Rain chances stay high for two of them, and the temperatures get high starting Saturday.